sitting there. It's actually a digital camera. It's, uh, it's from Oregon Scientific and it, uh, from what I read on the web, claims to do 640 by 480. Now, I have not been able to get it to do very much. Uh, it was only a dollar. The guy, of course, said it works, which they always do. Yeah. You can guess it's stereo from the viewer that came with it. Actually, the viewer is kind of interesting. It's a rather novel thing. It was shipped flat in the slip case and then you fold it up and it snaps together. It's really well made. Uh, it's a village lost and found, which is a collection of uh, stereo cards from the 1850s in England by uh, T.R. Williams. Uh, they were sort of scattered around and these two authors collected them together and did some studies of them. One of the authors is Brian May who the oh, yeah. younger people here may know as the lead guitarist for Queen. <laughs> and those of us who are in astronomy know that he has a PhD in astronomy right. from one of the best universities in, in England. <laughs> also, he was working on his degree in astronomy when his band kind of got popular. So he took off 30 years and then went back and finished his PhD, <laughs> which has got to be the longest time on record for actually completing one. Uh, it's a really great slipcase. Um, as I said, the owl viewer comes like this. It's made by the London Stereoscope Company, who made the original uh, cards that he's found. I'm Henry from Chichwood. And today, I think, is something like the sublime to the ridiculous. 
and I thought to myself, what can I do big and small? So here is my small item. What the heck is it? Well, it's a back lens cap for a screw mount like a lens. Oh, yes, it is a rear cap. It screws on here, comes in fine. And now what do you have? You have a telescope. And you're sitting here looking at uh, something that is uh, upside down, but nevertheless it's there. <laughs> and Kodak, up in the corner there, had number, numerous ones of these, which were lithographs. Well done. This has faded some, but it's been in my, my collection for many, many years. And it's a farm scene near Tunbridge, Vermont. 1938, I believe, uh, called the Eighth Art. And the Eighth Art is color printing. It's by Victor Kepler. Now, you've uh, all heard of uh, Bert Kepler. His, Victor Kepler was his father. And Victor Kepler uh, was a very prominent commercial photographer. In the 30s, he was a dollar a year man during, uh, during World War II. And the book is a compendium of the current uh, color, uh, color processes and how you went about using them. Limited edition, I think this was like 1,000 to 1,500 copies. This one is signed. It's, there's the actual, uh, actual print tipped in the, uh, tipped in the front. But if for some ungodly reason you were ever wanting to try Carbro or some of the other processes that were available back then, all of the information is here. Someone who did know Oregon? So it's a sort of that you're in a travel, you're in a, some sort of travel, see the spot, take the shot. Uh, the side that I want to show is the printing on the chip. These are usually people say, well, I have no printer or whatever. The printer I use is 7600 Epson. Pretty much you can find it for two, three hundred bucks on eBay. Try to rescue, clean it up. And of course the ink is a problem. So I decided to get uh, some matte ink, which is sometimes easy to find too, 30 bucks expire. And using other couple like glycerol, glycerine, and photoflow, dissolve the ink, create some base, and create different shades. Thank you. I'll take uh, about 15 seconds to get the hardware fired up here, so uh, let's take a second here. The first photograph is extremely well known. It's probably the most important photograph ever taken. And it was taken in France in 1826. This uh, project was really a spin-off from another project, which was to develop a mechanized way to make printing plates. Um, however, as accidents often do, it changed the course of history, and this one certainly did. I'd been in FISD for many years at this time, and I'd heard the stories about the first photograph, of course, and there it was, two feet away from me in this display case. I almost fell on the floor. Uh, it was, of course, the view from the grass, taken by Joseph and the four Neops summer of 1826, and it's a view of his courtyard from the second floor of his home. So um, I actually came back to FISNI a month later and did a show and tell, two minutes, but I made a resolve to myself, <coughs> I want to find out how this first photograph got from France to Austin, Texas, and Austin is kind of off the beaten track. You expect it to show up at Harvard. Well, this was Texas, so found out about this seal room. They went into it in uh, 2005. It was completely intact as of the moment of his death in uh, 1840. And they moved every, they took everything out of the photo lab in the home, gave the room back to the family, and moved it intact. Or is it just something that you don't want to dig into enough to get this Um Well, Helmut Gernsheim, who I would consider an expert in these matters, say it's on pewter. So, so I'm willing to say pewter, okay. but other people say tintype. Another question tintype. is, did they, is there any possibility that he actually did have fixed some other images before this, but this is the 
one that he somehow kept? Or, you don't know that for sure? Uh, no one knows, and there's no way to find out. Yeah. And, but there's nobody that contradicts that this is the first photograph. The first one. Appreciation. Oh, great. Okay.